recognize this, and this is where we are going to talk about the mechanisms I used to solve this run. Let's get right into it. Undoubtedly, the most important part about this run is these gears. I had to make them super long because that's the only way it would be able to fit the basketball hoop using this rack and pinion. I actually had to use double, and I don't have anything longer than this. So this was the longest I could possibly go. However, that still wasn't enough. And if you saw my 510 point video, I had a different head. And that head was extremely risky because it had the perfect amount to lift the basket. Almost one half of a stud of safety left. So it was extremely risky. And in that video, as you can see, I had to push the basket back in order to even get a chance. But this one works better because it has a slope. And this slope gives me about an extra two studs of height so I can comfortably lift the basket up to the full height without any risk. Although in the video I posted today, it didn't make it to full height. Unfortunately, it got jammed on one of the white pieces used in the lock, as shown here. And that ended up catching it and it couldn't go to full height. Neither did it put the cube in because it missed that. The reason it didn't do this is because it's extremely hard to lift the basket without jamming into these white things. I'll try to find a solution to this for my full improvement video, but as for now, I just have to, I, I just kind of have to hope I hit right here because if you go a little too far, even if it, it seems like a smooth edge at first, but you can run into this and your robot won't go much farther. The reason this is so important is because not only does it complete the botcha mission, the basketball mission, and the weight mission, but it lifts very far, which allows it to complete each of these tasks. That's why this is probably the most important part of the mission. But let's get into the small little details that make things work. This is the next important part of the mechanism, which is a moving gate in the back, controlled by a linear actuator in the back the gear system in the front, which allows me to move this gate up and down. However, I don't have a linear actuator on both sides, so it kind of sags on this end, so I wasn't able to retrieve that health unit. But as for the cell phone, all the robot has to do is back up to here, and it doesn't fit, fit perfectly, but that's fine, because the weight of this will handle it. So now, it can, the robot can drag the cell phone back to base. Again, if you haven't seen the run video, I highly encourage you watch that because then you won't, you'll understand how it looks like when the robot's actually running. The next part of this mechanism is the cube dumper. This is the cube used to put into the basketball hoop while it's at full height. I would have put it in at the bottom, but I didn't really have any room in the front to do that. So what it does is when the robot moves here, the cube just falls down a simple slope on a pivoting point. I have these in the back as perfect weights, as I used by trial and error to make sure the weight was balanced so that the cube doesn't fall out while it's traveling here. It's really quite a simple mechanism, and the only risk here is if it comes out one of the sides or if it comes out the back, but that's the same for almost every mechanism. However, this one has more of a risk than a lot of mechanisms like brickering for coming out the back because it's a slope. And sometimes if you're not, if you don't have the angle right or the speed right, occasionally the momentum can propel it just enough to get to the outside of the rim. This is just a simple slope used for completing the botcha mission or the other botcha mission. Essentially how it works is your cubes are here, the robot moves forward and it precisely drops one of the cubes down. In this case, it can be either blue or red. We have programs for both of them. Last thing is a basket for the slide. As the FLO expert pointed out, shout out to him, it's more accurate to use a basket and, and just drag the basket back. Ours is a kind of a weird design, but you know what? It works and we're moving on. Essentially how this basket works is when the robot puts it here, it has a funnel at the top to align itself. That way, if it comes in like this, just a couple of studs off, it can align itself. This goes around the robot and because it's a self-aligning system that goes around the robot, it also helps align the robot. Because as I learned, starting position in FLL is a very important variable. If your starting position is off, 
most likely your entire program will be off. So I like to have something, some quick error catching device at the start, just to render the st uh, starting position non-effective because that way our robot tends to be more accurate.